Good morning, Bismarck Mandan. Thank you all for joining us. You are joining us at United Way's Community Talk, and I am Jenna Gullo, the Executive Director of the Missouri Slope Area-Wide United Way. Just flew in late last night after a wonderful, wonderful holiday with my parents back in western New York. Uh, but here with us to kick off the program are some fantastic community leaders. We have Josh Ash Askvig. Askvig, is that right, Josh? Just, just like it's spelled, yeah. Mr. Askvig is the AARP Associate State Director for Advocacy, and he's also a Bismarck City Commissioner. Josh, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Jenna. And then alongside him in the studio is Doreen Redmond. Doreen is the AARP Associate State Director for Community Outreach. Nice Hi, to Jenna. have you thanks both. Thanks for having us. Absolutely, absolutely. You know what, United Way... We do help so many people in the community, and so we, we certainly focus on issues affecting children, those with disabilities. We're looking at an increase in homelessness. But one area we have always and forever been committed to are the seniors in our community. And it, it's we understand, too, in North Dakota, we have one of the fastest-growing senior populations. Isn't that right? Absolutely, it is, Jenna. You know, there was a study done about a year ago that showed North Dakota ranks in the top 10 in terms of uh, senior population. And we actually just had a presentation about a month ago, uh, I guess it was two months ago now. It's hard to believe that it's December already uh, from uh, the North Dakota State University Extension Office and uh, about what's happening with the demographics. And as the baby boom boomers reach retirement age and, and reach uh, age 50 plus, uh, looking at what impacts that's going to have on our changing demographics in North Dakota. And uh, it's interesting because when you think of demographics, you usually want a pyramid. And what it shows is essentially it's going to be a silo because as all those boomers uh, retire, they're, they had fewer kids, uh, et cetera. And so the, the trend almost changes. Uh, and so it certainly creates opportunities. Uh, there are challenges, but I, we think there are opportunities as a result of that as well. So I do have a question. Are, is North Dakota the fastest growing uh, state in our area for uh, the senior population? Off the top of my head, I don't, I don't remember if we were the fastest. I know we were certainly in the top 10 um, and, and I believe in the top five. But, it, you know, the news story came and went and I just haven't had a chance to go back and look at it again recently. But um, we certainly have a, a growing senior population and see that uh, that trend uh as we continue to quote unquote gray in some respects. But one of the things we talk about a lot at AARP is the fact of uh, you get to age if you're lucky. And, and uh, as, you, as you get older, that doesn't mean your, your life uh, necessarily has to, uh, to fall away or, or whatnot, that you always can reinvent. And, and we always talk about it in our office about what's next. You know, we had uh, a colleague retire not too long ago and we didn't say goodbye. We just said, what's next? And actually he's doing something different uh, now and, and really enjoying it. And so um, always looking for how can you continue to make yourself better. And part of that is having the supports and, and services in place to do that. And that's why we do a lot of advocacy on policy issues around uh, allowing people to stay in their homes as they age. One of the things we know from talking to our members and surveying individuals 50 plus in North Dakota is as I age, how am I going to continue to stay in my home safely? One of the other things we know that there are major concerns with because uh, health expenses in your, your body tends to uh, break down as you start to age is it, your health care goes up. And so how do you make sure that you have access to adequate, uh, affordable health care uh, as you age? And one of those key programs is Medicare. And I know we wanted to, we wanted to talk a little bit about that today with uh, those that are on Medicare, the prescription drug deadline is uh, coming up here, renewal deadline is coming up here on December 7th, and we wanted to make sure that uh, if you haven't had a chance to go get that renewed or, or take a look and make sure that you're getting uh, the deal that's best for you. And so when someone renews, how do they go about that, Josh? Well, uh, there's there's two ways, really. And one of the things we want to clarify is there's been a lot of confusion. We've had plenty of calls in our office about, hey, uh, I've heard about this exchange thing. How do I, or the marketplace, how do I get on there? I need to renew my Part D. You don't need to do anything related to the healthcare law. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, we're more focused on do what you've always done. Go to Medicare.gov, or you can visit the North Dakota Insurance Department website, which is nd.gov slash 
N-D-I-N-S. Um, and you can find resources there like state health insurance counselors. And so that website, one more time, Josh? ND.gov slash N-D-I-N-S. That's fantastic. And if people at home who are listening don't have a computer, I know that there are many around the community that are available for use. Uh, Doreen, where would people be able to find computers if that's the easiest way for them to go about renewing? Uh, certainly, Jenna. They could use the library, perhaps, or look for another, go to the Capitol, to the insurance commissioner's office, or call them. The, I have the phone number for the insurance commissioner's office, and that is 701-328-328. Two four four zero. That's fantastic. The deadline again is the seventh, December seventh. December seventh. Saturday. That's just the end so of this week. This week it needs to be done. Yes. Fantastic. Everyone needing to enroll for Medicare. That deadline is coming up. Uh, stay tuned for more more important information, as well as some interesting volunteer opportunities, ways that you can not only receive help, but way that, ways that you can be a part of helping. We are going to take a short break here. This is Super Talk 1230. I'm sorry, it's 1270. And we will be back. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us today. This is Jenna Gullo, the Executive Director of the Missouri Slope Area Wide United Way, hosting your own community talk where we talk about issues that affect each and every one of us in the Bismarck Mandan area. We have some experts in the studio today as we talk about issues affecting senior citizens in Bismarck Mandan. We have Doreen Redman, the AARP Associate State Director for Community Outreach. And we also have Josh Askvig, the Associate State Director for Advocacy. Thank you both for joining us. Thanks. Thanks. Wow, do you get those titles on your business cards? <laughs> yeah, they do somehow. <laughs> I was starting to sweat there trying to read those. <laughs> Woo. What, what you'll see often is we always shorten it to ASD because there's Associate State Directors uh -huh. in every state. And then we always get asked, what? What's ASD? What degree was that? What, what you know? What certificate was that? So, so oh, no, Marlo Crow was a fantastic and still is a fantastic volunteer at our United Way. What was his role at AARP? Actually, I um, now have the role that Marlo had. He was our associate state director for community outreach Isn't prior to his retirement, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to try and fill his shoes now that he is gone. So, well, and is he yeah. still here locally? In Actually, the area? he's moved away. He's in the Twin Cities area now, oh, and okay. doing his next big thing. In I life, bet so. he yeah. is. Well, yeah. we really rely heavily on a lot of our uh, agencies around the community, but then also individuals from those agencies, especially as they, you know, retire and mm -hmm. they Absolutely. they end up volunteering with us through RSVP. Uh, also, people just call our office and let us know. So if there is anyone out there who is interested in becoming more active, more engaged, uh, wants to become a part of the solution, whether it's with children, whether it's with the disabled or the elderly, Elderly, please call our office at 701 255 3601. And also, we have a neat website called volunteerbizman.com. And that's where agencies around the community can post different needs that they have, whether it be in kind needs like beds or blankets or cribs, diapers, hygiene products. Uh, they also can post their volunteer needs. So sometimes we have agencies that United Way funds, and they may only have one or two employees. So having an extra set of hands is a an enormous, enormous help. I know at United Way, we only have five employees. And so we do the work we do. We get the job done because of our great volunteers. So Doreen, we were talking about your position at AARP. Mm -hmm. And so as the director for community outreach, what does that mean? Well, we just what you were talking about too, Jenna, working with volunteers is a big part of what my role is at AARP. Um, what we are trying to do is to make sure that we engage a lot of our members and our volunteers. They bring a lot of skills and talents that they have had in their careers and their experiences that they've had over the years. And we believe that, you know, those types of skills and talents can certainly be used by organizations like the United Way, like AARP, for the betterment of our state and our nation and, Absolutely. and our communities. I know so that, that's really what we're working towards. At United Way, our board of trustees, there's many retirees on that board. And Absolutely. just to tap into their wisdom, their experience and knowledge is, is priceless, really. 
Absolutely. We agree, too. And, you know, our work, uh, we're, our community presence and what we're doing out there in communities to try and make life the best it can be for those of us who are 50 plus and I uh, entered into that category this just this year so I don't I'm believe it, all about it. <laughs> you can't so. tell at all oh, thank you. And, and I bet you are just a breath of fresh air for a lot of the folks that you work with we well, love I... having her Jenna <laughs> oh. we loved Marlo and um, wish Marlo his his best but we love having her in the office it's been great I bet you're a little thank whippersnapper you. there so you've been hosting a lot of lunches throughout the state we have. We've been focusing on the health care law and uh, hosting Lunch and Learns. We've got about 10 or 12 of them around the state that we are in the midst of right mm-hmm. now. We have five more coming up next week. Um, in fact, if people are in the Jamestown, Fargo, Valley City, Grand Forks, or Dickinson areas, we have some coming up in those communities. Um, and as well, we have one in Mandan, um, and I know that Debbie is probably going to be talking about that a little bit later on, uh, so she can she can reference that one. But um, we are out there trying to give people the facts and the information they need on the health care law. There's a lot of misinformation that's been spread, and we're just trying to get to people um, set them um you know set their minds at ease and assure them that if they are on medicare they really don't need to do anything differently than what they are doing right now with reviewing their uh medicare part d program right now during this open enrollment period that again ends on saturday um so nothing really changes for those who are on medicare except for actually some improvements that the health care law makes for Medicare people, including more preventive services that are now covered, uh, lowers some of their out-of-pocket costs because the donut hole, as some people are aware, um, is now shrinking and going to eventually close. That donut hole was a gap in coverage where more uh, prescription drug coverage was was needed, and that is what the health care law is providing right now. Wow. And and there has been a lot of negative attention, hasn't there? Uh, But so go into give us some examples about some of these benefits that that people might not be aware of and things that you've seen firsthand. Certainly. Well, especially for Medicare people, the more preventive services include um, a yearly wellness visit. Now, that's not a, a physical per se, but it's a wellness visit. And it also includes some cognitive uh, screening as well, which is very important as people age. Uh, so that is extremely valuable. Also, screenings for diabetes and certain types of cancers are included. And already, um, just since the health care law has gone into effect, we've seen that 180,000 people in North Dakota have already taken advantage of these expanded preventive care coverages. And, and I think the important thing to just add on to that, Jenna, is that it, when we talk about these these services are being expanded and it's cover Medicare's covering more that that means there's not going to be a co-payment or a deductible for these screenings for um, you know if you go get uh, a colon cancer screening that that's going to be covered now and it may or may not have been before um, so if you're on regular Medicare it wasn't covered before and 180,000 people in North Dakota are already getting some of those expanded preventative care services which I think we think is is the right idea catching Catching diseases early obviously makes them more treatable um, 99% of the time. And so uh, making sure people get in and are able to get seen and get those screenings rather than have to pay some of those copays that they had to pay before is, is huge. That's fantastic. And <clears throat> do they just contact their primary physician or who, in, are all of the physicians and health clinics, are they all up to speed well, on all of these new changes? Well, I think that's one of the things that that's part of the reason we're doing some of this education is that um, an informed consumer is often uh, the best consumer and that an informed person who understands, <clears throat> excuse me, what their coverage covers and whatnot can ask those questions and have that conversation and work with your doctor about making sure that uh, that they know that that's covered. But if they're seeing a doctor right now and they're on Medicare and that doctor's going to continue to accept Medicare as a, a form of payment because it is one of many forms of payment, uh, then it should be covered now and that doctor would be able to get reimbursed uh, through the normal normal process that they would. And so what are some of those major health concerns that people should be aware of? Well, I think Doreen listed a couple of them. I mean, diabetes and cancer, we've certainly seen um, especially the diabetic uh, 
quote unquote epidemic and how that's taken off and making sure that people are taking a look at how do they take care of themselves and how do they maintain good health and, and keep track of that and working with their doctor to put together a plan of action and, and screening for it. Many people may have it and they don't even know it until they find it, uh, mm -hmm. find something that uh, wasn't there before or an ulcer or something like that. I think the other thing we haven't really talked about, which I think is absolutely timely with the prescription drug benefit uh, renewal deadline being Saturday, again, uh, is the fact that uh, under the Affordable Care Act now, uh, those on Medicare are going to see lower out-of-pocket drug costs. You know, currently under the law, there's what's called a donut hole. And, and as I explain this to people when we do these presentations, no, that's not the thing you eat in the middle of the donut all the time, and you can't eat as many of them as you want. Uh, but there's a gap in coverage. Once once you've reached a certain percentage of or a certain dollar amount of coverage under your Medicare prescription drug benefit, that, that coverage disappears, and you have to pay the full cost of those drugs up to reaching wow. a certain level. Well, under the Affordable Care Act, that donut hole is slowly shrinking so that that gap becomes smaller and smaller and smaller until it eventually disappears in 2020. And so currently in 2013, individuals are getting a 52.5% discount on brand name drugs, as well as a 21% discount on generics, saving them. Uh, we've estimated since the start of the Affordable Care Act, 15 million in out-of-pocket drug costs, or to put it another way, about 1,200 bucks a person. Um, so individuals on Medicare uh, have saved about 1200 bucks a person because of the uh, provisions in the Affordable Care Act that lower some of those drug costs. And by 2020, that co coverage gap is going to disappear. Wow, fantastic. And so are there actually any North Dakotans still out there without health coverage? Health yeah, there, are, there, yeah. there certainly are. You know, there's an estimate done, um, depending upon who you talk to, that um, between um, 40. 40 and 45,000, about 43,000 North Dakotans um, uh, are probably uninsured um, or, excuse me, eligible for the tax credit. There's probably upwards of about, I want to say, and I haven't seen that number recently, but I want to say about 70,000 individuals uh, that are uninsured in North Dakota, many who can get assistance in the marketplace. So whether they qualify for Medicare or not, you know, one of the things we fought for in the legislative session was expanding some health coverage for individuals, especially between the ages of 50 and 64, who may not have the income to buy that health insurance so that the state will help them out with that. And and uh, actually, the federal government, and, and that was a big, big victory for us. And we were one of the states that decided to do that, uh, while other states are deciding not to. Wow. Wow. Great. And thank you for your advocacy. Over 70,000 people uninsured in North Dakota. If you are eligible for Medicare, that deadline for open enrollment is starting to uh, come, come near. It's Saturday, December 7th. You can call the insurance commissioner at 701-328-2440. Or you can go online at nd.gov backslash ndins. We will be taking a short break here. You are listening to United Way's Community Talk on Super Talk 1270. Join us in just a couple minutes. <laughs> 